Well, hello everybody. It's Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. I'm here at a coin show in Spring Hill, Florida. I want you to come inside with me. I want to look at some really cool stuff with you. So please join me. All right, so now we've made it inside the coin show. We're gonna to talk to some people that have been doing this for years and know a lot about these coins and our hobby. Uh, we're gonna see a lot of interesting coins too. So come along on this journey with me as I walk through this coin show in Spring Hill, Florida. How'd you like it? Yeah. yeah. I like the way at the end where you came back and you said I bought these. Yeah. Was that? I bought these. Well, you know, um, that was something everybody asks me. They say, hey, what'd you pick up there? So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in at the end. How are we doing, sir? Okay, so what are we looking for? Very cool, thank you. Yeah. I was at the beginning and then I was... Remember your voice now, oh. at the very beginning. Then I was on your wind down, you yeah. know, as you were winding down and going through the cases. Yeah, I found this. What's kind of interesting? It's an 11 cent coin. A dime on the front and a penny on the back. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, you oh, can do whatever you want with that. 11 anyway. cent coin. Yeah, just for fun. You know, somebody somebody made it. A novelty coin. I think somebody was telling me about this right here. How they do that. That's it's very interesting. But you just want a really nice one to look at? Yes, please. Beautiful. 230 bucks too, that's relatively cheap. It is. That's amazing. You see the Liberty right there on the band? You never see the Liberty on that band. That's nice. A good following of people. Yes, it's getting there. Yeah, I have two other very complimentary of I have this in a 69. 
I try my best to appeal to a lot of different people and it's tough. I, I started out doing like coins and then I started getting really into like silver. So then I got those people following me. Then I started getting into quartz silver. So I got like all these different groups of people that all, so maybe not everybody's into coins. So they only watch, you know, like the other kind of videos, the quartz silver stuff. It's, uh, it's tough. No, listen. This is just a piece of jewelry. Oh, it's got a bezel on it. The next thing is $5. Okay. Okay. Is something pretty? I like pretty things. Oh, it is pretty. Proof 61. Beautiful. Cameo. Yeah, it's awesome. Colors are beautiful on that coin. It's amazing. Like I said, if I was your age, I wouldn't sell that. But I bought it a few days ago. It's time to move it. All platinum, nice. That's pricey, huh? It's a premium set. It's a 70. It's beautiful. This coin alone is 1200 That's just a gray sheet price. That is beautiful. Now, coin guy, did you get the, uh, the new Eagle that came out uh, a couple days ago there? Nobody got it. I had phone calls about it, people were irate. It opened up at noon. I had a person call me. Six minutes after 12, it was sold out. Yeah. So let's talk about politics here. Don't be mad, I got two of them. Did you? Yes, I did. I got one. <laughs> but I could. I only had, only have really have one account that's where that works. A friend of mine got one. But I heard everyone else, everyone else crapped. I heard they're on eBay for five hundred already. Seven. Yeah. Seven hundred. Oh, at the, at the, at the it, and that's that's non graded. At that's, the Baltimore show, they were paying a thousand, so they can get a first day of this show. And the Baltimore ones on eBay, they'll go for two grand. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> well, you know, for the 30,000 vintage, they're comparable to the 95W Eagle. Yeah. That's 30,000. And they, well, they've come down, but they still worth 2,000, 2,500. So. Or 13,070. No, I heard that's down to about nine now. I don't know. Well, I haven't seen lately. The last I saw was the 12. It doesn't matter. I just got one. 13479. 5, 6. One, three, four. So, on a uh, on a guesstimate, total, I, I just kind of like want a, a guesstimate from you. How many autographs are you going to sign today? I don't know. I should have wrote that out. Three autographs. Maybe five. People remember your face. I don't know who you are. Oh, I get them. They come in all the time and tell me. You think five? That. Yeah. I don't think any, but we'll see. I'll get one before I leave. How about that? I'm afraid Tom might show up. <laughs> You've been talking about me. I want to meet you. And Brad. And Brad, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> he might, you know, Clearwater's close enough. I think he hangs out in Clearwater quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> to the, uh, what is he a member of? Scientology. Yeah, do they have a, I think they have Clearwater a Clearwater Sears for it, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, well, he, might, I'm doing he might be the, over. I'm doing a Clearwater show in March. Uh-oh. He might very well he see He might be guys. looking for me then. You'd freak out. You'd freak out if Tom came by and he said, hey, we are doing the movie. We are doing the movie. <laughs> he might say something to me about the long 20 times. And grocery answers. That will be nice. Okay. <laughs> what, what are we using the, uh, what is this, like litter? Cat litter? No, these are wheat pennies. Oh. 5,000 weenies. Oh, it's just, okay. I should write that on there. Yeah, I thought it was trying to sell cat litter. I was like, is that something new for? Well, if things are slow here. Yeah. You can always make a couple of bucks, it's easy to come. You might have to start selling cat litter if things don't go well at the coin show.
How well do these coppers sell? Hey, not so well lately. They used to, when you know, price the metal and the metal and all that. A couple left there. And uh, these things, too. <laughs> How much do those go for? Uh, those are like three. But oh, cheap then, huh? That was more. <laughs> for the picture. For the picture. Oh, look at this. What's that? Love tokens. Oh, there's a couple of those. Where you gotta be on the love tokens? Uh, one's a little cheaper than the other one. The one was like 40 bucks or something. And the other one, like, I think I only got like 25 or you know, something. So I need to grab the two down. It was a little cheaper. I'll get every way. The quarter is pretty nice, and it has some of the where they soldered the like pin on there too. So. Oh, so the pin's been removed? Yeah, they, that's what they what they would do is solder a pin on the back of it so that their girlfriend could pin it on. I had an old dime. Yeah, it turned into a money clip. Yeah, it took it off. It was a little damaged on the back, but still. Yeah, a 1796 dime is a 1796 dime. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm always She doesn't mention it right away, but like she'll use it at her advantage, like later down the line. If I say something like, "Oh, we can't get that today," yeah. and she's then she'll say, uh, "Oh, remember those you know coins that you bought? You didn't have any hesitation buying those." <laughs> I probably won't put that in the video either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be our secret, I hope. Oh, it's more like how much do you spend on that? <laughs> I'm like, it's not. You're not really spending, it's money. Yeah, that's all. You're buying money. So How at can least you do I can get my money back, you yeah. know, if I want to go and, and get my money back from somebody. I may not get it all, but uh, I'll get it. You, know. you, can't, you can't be mad at me for paying money for money. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Does this stuff ever ever really go anywhere? This It used to, again, same thing. I, I go to one, there's a show in Lakeland called Collectorama. Collectorama. And, and they do like everything, trading cards, the poker pets and stuff. And I, I would find people that wanted it there. Well, this is what they call an altered date. Now, this is a very, very good Lincoln scent, okay? And I sent that in because I wanted them to authenticate it because I thought there might have been a problem with it. 1914D. 1914D. And that's an altered date. Yeah, it looks like it's a little raised, doesn't it? Well, it's actually not. The, the reason it's raised is because they took a 1944D and shaved the corner of the, the four off to make it a 14D, because a 14D is a key date coin. Right. And I said, how often have you seen them? I says, I've known they've been around for years. He says, we get at least one a month. Wow, that's one a, a month? Yeah, one a month. And that's a certification business wow. that uh, told me that. Huh. I've had this coin since my uncle passed away. So I just never really long. looked at it. I mean, he, I says, you've got to show me where the alteration is so I can understand if I need to talk to somebody about this coin, if somebody's interested, because they actually, there is a market for these. Yeah. Even though they're altered, of course, you don't get $175 for it because it's altered coin, but it's, uh, he said they're worth anywhere in the neighborhood of 40, 30. Being a fake coin. Being a fake coin, because it's yeah. an important fake. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Well, you know, I found it fascinating that a lot of people they collect fake coins, like uh, the silver coins. Sure, uh, they, got it? They have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, they collect whole whole sets of fake coins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, right. One guy tells me, he says he only collects fake coins. He said, I know a guy <laughs> with whole, who only collects coins with holes in them. That's, yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah, me I'll, too. I'll avoid those. <laughs> I've got a few, you know. I've got a few that are actually worth some money, good money, even though they got a hole in them. Yep. You know, we say it's ridiculous, but people look at our collections and stuff of coins, and they go like, why are you collecting coins? They think right. what we're doing is ridiculous. Coins? Yeah. Nothing like those. Those are different. No, 1934 to 39 were all silver. And then the two marks were quarter ounce. 
five marks ahead. No, it's good. Yeah, there's another one. That's what the hobby's all about, just liking things. Spend money. <laughs> Spend money on money. Since I don't marry or anything, I can do it. The best part about it is that it's actually worth something, so when you go to sell it, it'll be worth something. I think I will be. I'll be the same way. It's good talking to you. Are you more of a, uh, a seller than a collector, or you kind of do both? Or? Yeah, collector dealer. What happened was my dad passed away, so he was a collector, and I was going with him to flea markets buying stuff. I remember when you could buy rolls of Indian head pennies back in the fifties for five dollars a roll. Wow. You know. Well, anyway, he bought a lot of stuff from some dealers, and I wanted to sell some stuff. He had them in flips like this with the prices on there. And the dealers wouldn't even give me the price that was on there. And he goes, why don't you get a case and go to the flea market and you'll get them prices for it. Yeah. So next thing you know, instead of selling, I'm buying. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Turned your whole life upside down. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good now that I'm retired, I got something to do. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. I wish I was retired. I'm jealous of you for a little bit there. <laughs> Now, as a uh, as a buyer, we were able to get that that eagle that's making everybody money now. The one that came out a couple days ago. No. No, which one? It was a 2019 uh, reverse enhanced proof from the U.S. Mint. Yeah. People are uh, you could buy it for 70 bucks, but it sold out within like 18 minutes. It was so fast, and people are now selling it for 700 bucks. You know, a day, a couple days after. Right. They don't even have it in their hand yet. Yeah. But then, and then, then wait a year or two. And then it'll come right back down. It'll come back down, sure. But you know, you gotta you gotta strike while the iron's hot on those kind of things. The interest is there. You gotta you gotta grab at it. I was really looking for today, and I don't know if you have it. Is a uh, Texas commemorative half dollar. Uh, if I do, it's, it'll be in that book on it'll the last be in here. page. I think on the last page. If I find it, we might make a deal. Hello. What year was the was it? Uh, 1935, I believe. Oh, maybe I don't have that one. Those are pretty ones right here. They will. When you're so used to seeing Morgans that are all worn down and beat up, and you see some of these right here, yeah. that's a whole different world. Oh yeah. And for cheap, really cheap. I mean, you got the price at 65. What a great deal for such a, a beautiful coin. It's a, it's almost a poop like coin, man. Yeah. It's hot. The 81s were common, uh, 81s were common proof, proof strikes or uh, proof like strikes. Mm -hmm. 82s, 80, 80s, uh, San Francisco Mint really did a nice job striking them. Those look, those look great. This is my favorite coin right here. And I hope I find that coin. <laughs> well, you know what? I think it's in the other book. You got another one here. Oh, a copy, no. Too bad it's a copy. Here's some commemoratives. Don't see it though. On the, yes. on the first page in that book. Oh yeah, that's that's the, Here's the that's yeah. the page. If I have it, it'll be in here. No, you don't have the one I need today. It's a nice stone mountain, though. Yeah, 
don't they don't have the one I need. It's so hard to find this thing. Yeah, let me show you this one on the front page. Here. Isabella. They only made twenty four thousand of these. Oh, there you go. World's Columbian Expo. Yeah, in 93 it came out. So was that during that other uh, Columbian Expo, Expo, the one with the ship? Yep. Okay. The half dollar. They made yeah. the two half dollars, and they made, this is the only commemorative quarter the United States ever made. Yeah. I remember reading about that one, and there was, there was some kind of petition to have it made for some reason. I forget exactly why. Very interesting. That's got to be worth a, a pretty penny. I think I got three twenty-five on it. There you go. That'd be a nice they book in a book in that condition about four seventy-five. That's really nice. Really, really nice. He bought it at a garage sale? He bought it. This guy bought it at a garage sale. He paid six dollars for it. Six dollars at a garage sale for a piece of gold. Two and a half dollar gold piece. That's nuts. Makes me want to start going back to garage sales. I was never lucky there. That's Me neither. That's, that's just incredible. It is incredible. It was in a bunch of farm things. Wow. Alright, now I'm going to go to every garage sale I see. Right? <laughs> it's a two and a half dollar gold piece. Now, I'm looking for something in particular. Maybe you could help me out. You might be the guy that has it today. I'm looking for a Texas commemorative half dollar. No, I had Texas with a star and a four, and I kept it for myself. Uh, I know, no, it was in a six, and I kept it for myself, but I sold it for that's it. Yeah. And that's 64. Do you know a lot about the coins? No. There's so much to learn, right? Yeah. I mean, you could spend 10 years learning about coins and something else comes out and all of a sudden you gotta learn new stuff. Yeah. Or they just find out stuff about the coin that you never even knew and you gotta start all over. Yeah. Some pretty ones. You'll be the first bills that I looked at today. I'm always afraid to like ask like how much the bills are because they look very expensive. And most of the time when I see them, uh, like the good ones, people already have them in the grades. Like they're already graded by the different companies. Like what is something like, like, cause this is a horse blanket right here, right? This is, or this is a treasury note. Yeah, what this actually was, was a piece that was issued by Virginia during the Civil War to have some supplemental money out in the economy. So it's considered an obsolete or a state note. Something like that runs between 20 and 30 bucks. So very affordable. Yeah, oh okay. yeah. Very and it's, cool. you know, Civil War era, so it's pretty good. And now something here, this is issued by our government, right? These two? Right. These are early ones. This is an 1899 issue and a 1917 issue. And again, that runs about 100 That one runs about $45, $50. Can I see the back of that one right there, the last one? The cheaper of the two? Because wouldn't that be cool if I took one of those home today? I tried. Beautiful. Nothing... Uh, and it's definitely wrinkled up, but my goodness, like it's history. I mean, it's exactly. That's the way I like them. Very cool. Thank you. You're back. Boy Scouts for a while? Uh, I've been doing it since 1970. Okay. I was the world's largest eBay and Boy Scout member really full time for years on eBay. I regret never joining the Boy Scouts. That's a lot you different. Know, I, I go to Ikea 
and I get like a couch or something, and I got to strap it up to the car. I have no idea how to tie a knot. <laughs> you know, it's something simple like that. You're like, man, I really could have used that in my life. Something that won't come apart on you on the way home, right? Yeah. All right, this is crazy. Tell me about this Morgan right here. Is this? That's what they call a hobo Morgan, where it used to be like trench art back in the wars and stuff like that. Now, where that somebody's carved that. That's legit, then. I think that that one may be a, a Chinese Chinese done there. It's neat though, huh? It's just different. Didn't know they made a, a picture of my ex-wife on a coin. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You've seen the hobo nickels, probably. I have. It's a hobo dollar. Hobo dollar. I've actually seen one. I don't know that I've seen that exact one, but I've seen one similar. Yeah. Where they do like the skeleton work. Mm -hmm. People are like the skeletons and the, the Grateful Dead themes. And... Hey, what are you talking about the man for? I like the man. I follow the 32 concerts. That's a long time. Here we have some tickets out, please. The winning ticket number is. I have it's some. It's a $10 uh, gift certificate to be spent at any dealer here. There's some tickets here somewhere. Did you go to what stock? 372 Last four. If I can show you anything, just let me know. Do we have a winner? Eight one zero three. I don't think I even get. I didn't even get a raffle. I, I messed out. Did you get a ticket at the front door? No, I went to the back door. I'll see what happens. That was your number. <laughs> that could have been mine. Yeah. <laughs> New raffle ticket winner, 8103. Do we have a winner? Do I pull another ticket number? So original bankrolls. Desert Nat Desert? Deseret? Deseret. Desert National Bank. Let's see. Yeah. You're probably seeing that. Are you trying to sell those as a bag or you can sell them individually? If I sell them individually, they go for about $100 each. And wow. I'm not going to do that to people. I'll sell them at $80 a roll and they're going to get a good fine in them because they came out of that early American, or uh, should I say early bank. That's amazing. Yeah. Woo -wee. It's too rich for my blood today. Just ask the wife. So this is your shop? Yes. Okay. I don't mind doing that for you. You're very happy, thank you. As long as you don't mind me doing it. See, so you barely even have an accent to me. I thought you were right here from Florida. I'm from Poland, but I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do uh, a lot of shows all over the world. If out of just curiosity, mm -hmm. and this is me not, I'm not gonna buy anything, but would you show me like a really nice foreign coin in here? Like if I was gonna buy and get into foreign coins, what would be like a good one that would be like a good uh, foot in the door, let's say? Because every one looks so cool. Yeah, this is the most popular type of coin, the wild man. See the wild man with the tree? Yeah. That's the one of the most collectible tellers of 1600s. All right, so like many collectors. Okay. And the second one in a row will be a Vatican States, which is like this coin right here or that one. Which one? Uh, here? Right under those two. Okay. Those are Vatican State coins uh, because of Catholic faith being 1.2 billion people, a lot of people collect related to the Pope's coins. Very cool. Thank you for showing me those. Sure. That's a Venice. Everybody loves Venice. That's a Venice from 1600s. And like, where are the prices at on things like this that are very bad? They range from 300 up. And yours is close to that? Uh, this will be four, five, and 300. Okay. Very, very cool. Yeah. And like you said before, it's a whole different This is different high end collectible stuff. Yeah. Yes. I mean, high end, middle range. Sure. Middle range stuff. I personally like this one. I like them all. <laughs> yeah, but this is, you probably don't see it, since this is tied to the United States now. That's the biggest Afghanistan coin from 1902. It's in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yes. 1902, when the country was something else, not just uh, jihad and, and craziness. Can we turn it? Yeah. That's five rupees from Afghanistan. And what does something like this go for? This is about hundred thirty dollars. Okay, it's so a pretty affordable. Yeah, it's affordable coin. Very cool. Yep. Thank you. Sure. All That's right. when there were biggest uh, dealers in opium. 
Yeah, they still are. Actually. Yeah, they're big on opium still, right? Yeah. <laughs> opium, and I think that they even do um, our Himalayan salt. Yes. I think the uh, Afghanistan yes. is big on that. Yeah, yeah. they do. They do te Teutonic Knights order original shilling. Original shilling. Military order, which was created in the Holy uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem. Okay. This one was struck in Prussia in four, in 1397. 1397. How, yeah. so, how much Conrad is that? Von Jungingen. That's a $200 coin. So affordable again? Yes. Very cool. That's a lot of history right there in that thing. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's kind of... It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I've got that coin from the... Uh, oh, somebody else. Right. This is the shield of Teutonic Knights. When the uh, Archduke of Austria was was their uh, grandmaster, see the cross of the Teutonic grandmaster in the middle of the yeah, shield. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, that's the biggest silver coin they had. And for what, what country again? 1615. What country is this? This is Austrian Emperor. Okay. Teutonic Knights, you can, right. as you can see it. Very cool. Very neat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know a ton about this stuff. See, that's where I, that's collect, where I had to be. I collect since I was seven. Seven years old, you collected. After 9-11, I become a coin dealer. Okay. Because I was there. You were 9-11? My, my wife told me no more IT, no more computers. This is, this it's amazing is, how you tell so fast. Look, the coin, you just look at the coin and the color's wrong. And that's the same way with grading. For real toning. For real toning. The same way with grading, plus the surface is all shiny, like being polished. But with fluorescent light, the change of color on the highest part of the coin shows up right away. Okay. So that you can see a coin with, with just a little, take a, a gem on Walking Liberty half dollar and you can see a little bit of gray going right down, right down Liberty's leg where the wear is. I look at the, I look at the eagle's breast right here. Okay. Well, that's the high side on the reverse, but that's generally where, where it's real easy to see change of color. You see a little bit of friction, but the other, right down the center of the, center of her body is where you, where you see it on the obverse. Now what'll, what'll happen, the way you can make a coin turn this color is you can you can put it in, in a room with, you know, heated by cold, you know, sulfur and air, and they turn black like this. You can just look at it and the luster is 100% is original, just by the color alone. Okay. So you already know the coin's probably unk or just, just by the color. So quickly you can tell at a glance some, a little bit about the coin. You form your gut story. reaction. Okay. Yeah. And, and I don't see any change of color on the high spot of this, so I'm already, without even looking at it with a glass, I'm already, it's probably going to be an uncirculated coin. The other thing, right away, you look at a coin, you can hardly see a mark on this. There's virtually no marks on the coin. So in the old days, back in the 70s, we called that choice unk. If you looked at the coin, there wasn't any marks on it, it was choice unk. That meant it was MS-65, which was the highest grade at the time. There wasn't any grade higher than 65. Even though coins, like straight from the mint, were perfect, you know, proofs and stuff, they never got graded 70. There was no 70 grade that, that was being in use. So, mint state 65 is now called gem and choice has been dropped down to 63. I mean, you know, there's grade changes going on. But that's the way you teach grading. You tell them to look at the coin, look at the color of the coin. If the coin is original color and no rub on the coin, you're uncirculated or above. If you can see, still see luster on the coin, you're XF and higher. And if there's not, if, if you gotta really look for luster or stuff like that, or it's not there at all, you're in the lower grades. Because the, cause the mint, AU, once you hit a coin as AU, the only thing that lowers its grade is the amount of wear it gets.
see I'm looking now I don't really there's no hairlines there's no hits and stuff on this Where's, so I, if I had to guess on this I'm gonna guess this is in it. I would send this to the next grader as a six. It would probably get a six plus or a seven. They probably graded this six, five. Now we're gonna find out why it's not a six. Okay. If you look at a really nice coin and like a gem, gem looking coin like this and it's not graded real high, like it's in a three or four holder, that means the coin probably has hairlines or some cleaning on it. There's a, there's a little scratch over here. And that stuff that would have been difficult to tell by just the eye. You really need some kind of like Well, if you don't, device. when you're grading a coin, you've got to tip it and rotate it because I could put a scratch on that coin from a pin and if it's in this direction and the scratch is going in this direction, the light goes down the scratch, you won't even see it, not even under a microscope. Makes sense. As soon as you turn it, then the scratch reflects light differently. The light in the groove of the scratch uh, looks different. Very and it pops right out. I don't really see anything really detracting on this. Uh, CAC, CAC approves of the coin. Uh, in a couple, in two years, that'll get in a six holder because of great inflation. You gotta work that. Yeah, it's a, it's really, it's a nice six, 65, 65 plus. But I would, I guess, I guess that was a six. All right, so now I'm back from the coin show. And I want to thank Bob for, again, inviting me to this Hernando County Coin Show. I uh, really appreciate him uh, letting me get in there early, set up, film. Uh, that way I can show everybody what a great, fun time it is to go to one of these coin shows. So really appreciate it, Bob. Um, now I want to go over real quick exactly what I picked up at the coin show. All right, the first thing I picked up is these little, I'm going to use them for bullion, uh, little tubes here. Um, I found a nice young collector that was running a booth and I uh, couldn't say no. Couldn't say no to her. So thank you very much for these uh, little coin tubes or actually for me it's going to be bullion tubes. So that's going to be useful. I went ahead and picked up that love token that I was looking at. Um, I, I couldn't keep my eyes off of it in the video. I actually had to edit out a lot of the time that I spent looking at it. Um, now it's going to be it's going to be in my collection. I can look at it as much as I want now. So as long as I come to the dinner table once in a while, I think I can just pretty much spend my life looking at this nice little love token. Very, very interesting piece. Uh, the date on that was 1876. So very, very neat. So I seen some bullion there and I had to get my hands on some. I found this really cool Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse bullion piece. Uh, you can't hardly find these anymore. So it's one ounce of silver. Really, really neat artwork there with the uh, horses over the shield. And here comes the other side. So this is the White Horse of Conquest. So it's got some spots to it. It's, it's a hard coin to get, though. I was going to take it spots and all. Um, this is a really, really beautiful piece. Really happy to have that in my collection. So next up, even though I already have one of these, I wanted another one. Um, for the price I paid, I was so incredibly happy to pick it up. This is from the Elemental Mint, and this is the one of the Privateer Series rounds. This is the Siren. So just a really, really fantastic piece of uh, bullion. Um, really high relief there. And this just goes to show you that at coin shows, it's not going to be just coins. You got, you know, the memorabilia there. You got the bullion. You got all kinds of neat things. Uh, some people sell stamps. So you can find a little bit of everything at these coin shows. So maybe you're not a, a coin collector per se. Uh, you're a silver collector. Uh, there's stuff there for you too. So I've always wanted one of these horse blankets, right? I have no idea what I'm doing with these things, but I wanted one for the collection. That's how it goes sometimes when you start collecting. You start getting into other things. So uh, I've seen this in one of the videos I made, uh, I think earlier this year, maybe end of last year, and I just got hooked as soon as I seen it. And this one right here to me, um, you know, it's dinked up. It's got some wrinkles and cuts in it, but I tell you what, 
that means that this thing was utilized. This was not just, you know, sitting around on a shelf somewhere and passing time. This was going from pocket to pocket. This is a really, really neat piece of American history. And this is the wood chopper. And uh, man, I just love this kind of currency right here. Love how big it is. I love the history and artwork that comes with it. You know, fantastic. Let's see how much of this I can show off. So it's talking about counterfeiting on the back and it's punishable by a $5,000 fine or 15 years in prison at hard labor or both. I don't know that I want to get crazy into the bill currency, but I really, really wanted one um, just to say that I had it. And what, what a beautiful, beautiful piece to get. Um, extremely happy with this. It's not a piece that really should be graded. It's a piece that works in my collection uh, for my budget. This was something I really, really wanted to get to. Really happy to have that. Now you hear me throughout the video talking about one particular coin that I was looking for. I couldn't find this thing anywhere. It was very difficult to find. Uh, finally, I went by a case that I had gone by several times and there it was. It just, it was there. I don't know if it was there the whole time or what happened, but uh, there it was. So this is the Texas commemorative half dollar. And I, I had always wanted one. Um, I didn't know I was going to get one in this kind of condition. This is fantastic, this condition right here. But I will definitely take it. Uh, very, very beautiful coin. Let me show some close-up on this thing. So, um, 1935S, and it's graded by PCGS. It's MS65 with the nice little CAC sticker on it, a little bonus. I definitely love this coin right here. It's neat to see the obverse with the eagle on it. It's almost like... It's almost like the Flying Eagle Penny. Now you have the you know, Texas commemorative with the eagle on the obverse. Very, very cool. And then the reverse. Look how fantastic that is. There is so much going on here. That is so neat. So an absolutely fantastic coin um, and a great price too. So I'm happy to get some good pieces for my collection and uh, you know, not totally break the bank. You know, I got a really nice graded piece. I got bullion pieces, which I, I love both of these pieces a lot. Man, this wood chopper right here, I've never had such a cool bill in my collection before. I love that thing. Of course, a nice piece of history and the love token. And these these uh, tubes right here, man, these are going to go to some good use. I got things that I needed and I wanted for sure. So again, thank you to Bob. Thank you for all the vendors. Everybody I talked to was quite generous in letting me uh, videotape their stuff. Uh, very talkative with me. Um, it was awesome. I met several fans of my videos um, that approached me. We shook hands. We got to talk a little bit. Um, I had some stickers with me. I was able to give them some stickers as like a little, hey, you know, thanks for recognizing me. And it was great to talk to people. Um, it was great to see what they were after at the show and get to know them just a little bit better. Just a little bit. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. So in this video, of course, it was the Hernando County Show. And next up, it'll be the Pasco County Show. And there's the information, and maybe I'll see you there. But at this point, I have to go. Thank you again to all the vendors and Bob and everybody there. If you have a coin show coming up in your area, definitely consider going. Uh, you're going to learn so many new things. It's going to be fascinating for this hobby that you love. Uh, go there, experience the people, you know, talk to some people and, and get some knowledge from them. It's, it's, it's so much fun. You're going to love it. Um, I, I want to show off what it's like at a coin show. And so I hope this encourages you to try to go, or maybe it fuels your fire to go back to collecting, whatever the case may be. I hope you enjoy the video. Please thumbs up if you liked it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't. Spectacular is out. <laughs>